Hi, good afternoon. My name is Sandy Baird, and we're here with our monthly program called What's Going On? And in this program, we try to talk about current events that are very uh, relevant to the modern political scene. Some of those events are international events and statewide events and some local. But today we have with us Wafiq Faour, a Palestinian man who grew up in a refugee camp in the Middle East in Lebanon, correct? Um, he is from Palestine, though, born there, and then grew up, though, in Lebanon when uh, his family was forced out of Palestine, correct? Both parents. Both parents. Uh, and he now lives in Winooski. He is a citizen activist, and he has much to say about the current events, both in our, on our campuses and also in our cities like Washington, D.C. So thanks, Wafiq. What? Thank you, Sandy. Good to see you again. Good to see you. Wafiq and I have worked very closely together over the years, and um, I always appreciate his expertise, especially on all issues um, for foreign policy, really. But his expertise, of course, is the events which are now roiling the Middle East and everywhere in the world. So what's going on, Wafiq? The first event that I want to speak to you about were the encampments at UVM and everywhere. You were definitely a part of those encampments. I was up there a couple times and witnessed what was happening. But what was going on? You know, the reason I ask is there was so little accurate coverage of those student protests really anywhere, anywhere in the news. Um, and I believe our local encampments were important. They were not reported on in, in the least fairly or accurately. So I wanted to ask what was your take on the encampments, particularly at UVM, but you did others too, right? You yes, I mean, uh, I visited uh, UVM almost daily, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the Middlebury encampment as well. I visited the Sterling uh, College. The three encampments mm -hmm. uh, took place uh, in Vermont. Uh, the students' movement, that went into the encampment and they put demand from uh, the universities to divest uh, all their uh, money uh, from investment that helped uh, Israeli occupation and the Israeli apartheid. They are asking them to stop to invest on this, this institution to seize investing on Israel mm -hmm. and on, uh, on the on military in general, too. All the military? All the military, uh -huh. uh, because American military manufacturing are related to the Israeli military manufacturing as well. How is that? Uh, because many companies, they have uh, different kind of locations uh, of certain kind of parts and a lot of uh, spying uh, equipments are made on Israel or Israel pride itself that they are frontier on that field. Mm -hmm. And American uh, from uh, aerospace, et cetera, they buy, uh, and cameras, uh, they, they buy their equipment from Israel or manufactured on Israel. Uh, uh, from American company, they have location there, like Intel and others. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, I heard today that Intel... Intel? Yes. Uh -huh. It's an American company seized uh, uh, building a new production uh, in the West Bank uh, that uh, was up to... Uh, they were going to invest up to $25 billion. In the they stopped doing it on the West Bank. What does that mean? First of all, I, you know, even the simple idea, though, of the West Bank, I don't, under, I don't think many Americans even understand that term. W West Bank and Jerusalem and Gaza are the land that Israel occupied in 1967. With their the military. Military occupation. Yeah. And until now, on those areas, it's still military rules where the Palestinian people, they don't have a right as a citizens over there. And what Israel is doing is seizing more lands and building uh, settlements where it is Jewish-only settlements. Mm -hmm. Jewish-only roads too, right? With the Jewish-only roads. Mm -hmm. 
And by doing that, they are taking more and more of the West Bank, which is supposedly for the last 30 years, was under negotiation under Oslo Accord to be uh, the Palestinian uh, future mm -hmm. independent states. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, back to the uh, students' uh, uh, activism. It was the most natural American way, if we read the American history, that in 1960s, uh, during the civil rights movement, mm -hmm. we saw many American campuses uh, that they uh, did encampment or they took over uh, administration offices on many campuses demanding uh, equity, equal rights, and civil rights for black and brown people in here. It happened again uh, during Vietnam War and the most famous uh, uh, Kent University uh, ah. massacre mm -hmm. where four American students get killed at the hand of the American National Guard. Also at Jackson State in Florida, where black students were killed also. Yes. Same so protests. So what happened now, it's, it's the most refreshing of all the anti-war movement in what's happening on the Middle East and what's happening uh, in uh, Palestine, Gaza, and the West Bank. And it is more conscientious even uh, than the Vietnam War, because what? many people in Vietnam War, many students, got involved because the draft. Uh -huh. Here, it was conscientious because of the involvement of the American government on the war over there by sending unlimited amount of support to Israel to continue this genocide happening on Gaza. Mm -hmm. So the protests are about what? Demanding divestment from any companies, mm -hmm. is, uh, American companies and Israeli companies that helping the occupation and the apartheid over there. And the current war? In the current war? And of Israel against Gaza, essentially. Of course, it's to, but, but, but it brought other issues mm -hmm. because, let's say, the current war started in October 7. But it is just one incident mm -hmm. we're talking about mm -hmm. it. We're talking about uh, a historical occupation si since 1947, 1948, uh, and creating Israel and uh, uh, practically dismissing any right of Palestinians on, on that land, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, the students' encampment wasn't, oh, divest until this war stops. It was divestment until all the occupation stops and all the apartheid laws in Israel mm -hmm. will be diminished. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it brought attention to the uh, core and focused on the problem why wars keep going on and on for the last 76 years. And the, that war in particular of Israel against the Palestinians, correct? Of course. Yeah. The Israeli uh, uh, genocide against the Palestinians and the American involvement on right. that genocide. Okay. Because majority of the weapons that, let's say, until recently uh, have been used against Nusayrat uh, uh, massacre, which is three days ago, or in Rafah on the refugee camps, it was an American weapons, according to the mainstream media like CNN. Yeah, I saw that actually in the New York Times too. Yes. Right. Okay, so, so there is American what? involvement, yes. and the American public are uh, now talking about it, and actions like demonstrations or encampment of students are taking place. All right. So this, what you're uh, saying is that this war did not start on October seventh, but that it is a uh, 
war or an occupation that has been extending and growing really since 1948 with the creation of the State of Israel. Of course. Right? It's one incident of many. Uh, on the last 16 years, there was uh, at 16? least... 16? Uh, 16. For the last 16 years, yeah. on Gaza, I want to focus on Gaza, there was four other wars. Israel continue every two, three years uh, go and attack Gaza and try to invade Gaza. Why? Uh, well, they put Gaza on siege for the last 17 years. Israel uh, Okay, but pulled Gaza out. is separated from the rest of Palestine, correct? Uh, no, uh, Gaza is part of Palestine yeah. and it was occupied territory considered under the international law mm -hmm. and American uh, policy. And Israel was there until 17 years ago. Israel pulled out because they couldn't control Gaza, because people were in a movement to liberate themselves. They couldn't control it day to day. Uh -huh. So they pulled out from Gaza and they built a, a whole walls, practically sieging Gaza for the last 17 years that nobody can leave or come in nobody. or any nobody can leave or come in without an okay from the Israeli government so yes they left Gaza but they control all the life inside there is no food the trucking can come in without an okay from the government and that's you know? been for 17 years for 17 years mm -hmm. all the electricity the water and the airspace and the sea controlled by Israel fully. So when they say we left Gaza 17 years ago, why are they attacking us on October 7? They control every aspect of uh, life in, inside the uh, Gaza Strip. And in Gaza are Palestinian people? There are over 2 million, okay. uh, point three. Uh, two million and three hundred thousand Palestinian people at least. Okay, so Gaza is on the coast too, correct? It is in the coast and bordering Egypt and uh, part of greater historical Palestine that became Israel right. and then, in 1948. And it's separated from the West Bank. It's separated uh, from the West Bank. So why has Israel then chosen to continue to essentially occupy, essentially, uh, Gaza and why this current war has broken out? Well, if we read from the Israeli officials, we will understand that they have a plan for Gaza that they've done it over and over on the last 76 years, which is ethnic cleanse Gaza. Get push rid the of Gazan, the... Push the Gazans toward Egypt. Toward Egypt. Mm -hmm. Toward Egypt. Mm -hmm. And empty it completely. Completely. And, yeah, empty it completely. Maybe accept uh, small numbers as uh, practically as uh, cheap labor, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, they have the same plan to the West Bank to push them toward Jordan as well. It happened many times. That's why when you introduce me, you introduce me as a Palestinian refugee okay, yeah. in Lebanon, which is hundreds of thousands of Palestinians get pushed out from uh, Galilee, Galilee. A, and Haifa and Yaffa and the main cities on the shore and Akka. And all the and demolished 524 uh, Palestinian uh, villages completely off the map, and they they built uh, kibbutzes and settlements, and they brought uh, Jewish settlers uh, from uh, mostly Europe, Russia, Poland, uh, and the United and, States, and United States, and Britain, and France to settle instead of the Palestinians. And they never recognized that there were indigenous people living on there and they have any kind of rights. So that's why we call Israel as an apartheid because the remnant of the Palestinians who became now in millions on uh, Israel, 
and uh, stayed on the West Bank and Gaza, uh, this demographic change uh, will endanger the idea of a Jewish state or a Jewish and democratic state at the same time. This demographic change where the Palestinians now between the River Jordan and the Mediterranean Sea are the majority on that land. Are they still? Now they are. Still? Yes. Uh -huh. So to so, keep it as a Jewish state and call it wait. democratic, it's... Okay, but what does that mean, a Jewish state, that only Jewish people are citizens? Uh, exactly when they pass that law, the nation state, which is declaring that Israel is a Jewish democratic state, what does it mean? Right. It means uh, that the other people, the non-Jews, Muslims and Christians and seculars, they don't enjoy the same rights as the Jews. Mm -hmm. And this is where we come and call Israel as an apartheid. And according to the Amnesty International and the Human Rights Watch and the Israeli Human Rights Organization, Beit Salem, they study all the laws that discriminate against the Palestinians uh -huh. on that land. And they found it that overwhelmingly, you know, in favor of the Jews in comparison to the rest. So otherizing the Palestinians, not making them full citizens in West Bank, and or they Gaza. have no right, yeah. yeah, and Gaza, and they have no right to vote or to participate on the political life of that country, even though they are under direct control of Israel. Or if we go inside Israel, where they say, well, the Arabs can run for an office and they, some of them are Knesset members and we have a Palestinian as a judge on the Supreme Court. Beit Salem, the Israeli Human Rights Organization, says there is at least 60 laws that discriminate against the Palestinians who carry the Israeli passports from housing uh, to police mm -hmm. and uh, courts uh, to health care and uh, building hospital, to education, which is if you look at those areas, you will find the spending, even though the Palestinian carrying Israeli passport, they pay taxes like any mm -hmm. citizen. Mm -hmm. Yes, they have right to vote, but at the same time, they don't enjoy uh, the same kind of spending from the Israeli government to right. improve their lives, you know? And it's also also accurate to say that those Palestinians that live within Israel, yeah. those are the ones that were left there in 1948. Those were not the ones that were driven out. Exactly. Correct? All right, yeah. so the ones that were driven out went to the West Bank or were in Gaza and they they don't have any real rights. Yeah, they within. became refugees in right. West Bank and Gaza, in Lebanon, Syria, right. Iraq, and Egypt. and that was your Egypt. family? Yes, and my family ended up in, in uh, Lebanon. Lebanon, and that's where you grew up as well? Yes. But you were born in... In Lebanon. You were born in Lebanon. As refugee. So in Lebanon, too, we don't enjoy the... Correct. ...as full... Did you have a passport numbers. at all? No, we ha uh, when I came over here, I came in refugee documentary by United Nations. You know, mm -hmm. the refugees, they have a special documentary. So I came here. Now I have American passports because I'm married and settled here. But you also are a citizen now of the United yes. States, correct? Yes. Right. So, uh, but that's a whole interesting kind of personal story that I'm happy to really relate to our audience because I'm not certain that many Americans know the history of the region and how it affected people like you, like well, real Palestinians. Yeah, for, for uh, the, uh, you have 76 years, generation after generation of Palestinians who are living outside of historical Palestine, historical Palestine that mandated by the British before Israel have been created. They are living uh, not second class citizen. They don't have many rights, including certain kind of jobs. 
they have to have a special uh, papers to work on any jobs. We don't carry the ID of the people uh, of that country, if it is Lebanon or uh, uh, Iraq or uh, Egypt. Uh, uh, travel uh, documentary are refugee documentaries, so most of the countries will not welcome us because if they got deported, where to get deported, you know? Yeah, where would you have been uh, deported to? Yeah, I mean, usually to Lebanon, but at one point, Lebanon refused the Palestinians to come back, even though they born over there, you know. Uh, certain kind of jobs we cannot uh, attend, we cannot own. You, if, if you buy a house now in Lebanon, or you open a business, it has to be registered under Lebanese uh, citizen. And we are not Lebanese citizens, so any You're kind not of citizens uh, anywhere. Yes, so you have to register it under somebody from that country, mm -hmm. and it goes to the rest too mm -hmm. of those countries. Each country has their own laws, you know. Right. So it, they are less discriminatory in Syria against yes. the Palestinian. You can join the army, you can part of uh, life, you can register, you can be a doctor and you can be anything you want, but you still carry refugee documentary. You know, you have better rights in Jordan even, which is a big uh, number of uh, the population in Jordan are Palestinians. But it doesn't mean we are equal citizen to those countries. Can you vote? We are, huh? Can you vote? Could you vote in Lebanon? Uh, in Lebanon, no. Mm -hmm. No, you cannot vote, mm -hmm. you know. And they have a strange way of voting mechanism, even though they call themselves dem democracy, because it's allocated to the sectarian division, mm -hmm. not to one person, one vote, you know? All right, so this occupation by Israel it was extended in 1967 in the war. In yeah, I mean, it, it, Israel between 1948 and 1967 was on certain kind of map. The West Bank was mandated by the Jordanian then, mm -hmm. and Gaza was under the Egyptian. And on uh, 1967, uh, the, the, both they lost the war and chunk of their uh, lands as well. Uh, Egypt lost Gaza and Sinai, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. until 1973, and later uh, the what called Camp David Accord, yeah. you know, or agreement. Now come back on here, we are living, or we are bringing the Palestinian question in different light. Right. After that, the people, the world saw what's happening on Gaza. Yeah, and what is happening? this continuous genocide. Right. It's a daily killing. Well, there, what's the deal with the October 7th? That's what the Israelis are saying, that they're responding to an attack, correct? Yeah. By a terrorist group, Hamas, on October 7th, which the Israelis say justify their war and bombardment of Gaza. Can you talk about that version of the event? Yeah, it's, it's two, two, two misconceptions have been repeated mm -hmm. on the uh, mainstream media, and a lot of people are confused about. One is Every, as if everything, as if the history of that region started on October 7. Nobody asked her the question what happened on October 6, what happened mm -hmm. on October 5, mm -hmm. October 4, and 75 Octobers before, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, the second thing, the Western media and the American media, they keep calling all the resistance of the in Palestinians Gaza? in Gaza or anywhere opposing right. Israel occupation, Hamas. Mm -hmm. They are marginalizing the Palestinian people liberation movement in one group. What's Hamas? They called Hamas. Hamas is a national liberation movement, uh, the, the main base of Hamas uh, in Gaza. Uh, and uh, it started uh, on 1987 
I believe, after the first intifada. The intifada mean rebellion, right? It, it means uprising. Yes, okay, yeah. against Israel. So the Palestinian, Israel. yeah, the Palestinian intifada was uh, unarmed mm -hmm. rebellion against the military direct occupation uh, to the Palestinian land, mainly uh, on uh, West Bank and Gaza. Uh, what happened, Hamas started after the death of Palestinian laborers by a tank, Israeli tank, went over a whole car bringing laborers uh, back home and Israel didn't care about this death because it was happening a lot that brought anger to the people in Gaza and the creator of Hamas met supposedly this is what the history tells met on uh, Sheikh Yassin the creator of the group mm -hmm. which is he's a Muslim Imam uh, for a small mosque he is uh, uh, a handicapped man mm -hmm. and they decided that this is not the way we're going to live anymore mm -hmm. and they saw that the Palestinian Liberation Organization which is existing PLO. the PLO that they didn't deliver they didn't make any kind of a progress or improvement right. to the situation happening on the ground uh -huh. and for that they tried to bring alternatives there is not much different between Hamas, Fatah, the PLO, many organizations, all of them they are in Gaza fighting along with Hamas. Only the Western media marginalized the whole resistance as one group called Hamas. But they were, it's also the elected government, isn't it? Hamas? Hamas got elected uh, uh, on the, uh, in 2006. Uh, when the election happened in both uh, West Bank, uh, Gaza, and Jerusalem, Hamas won. Mm -hmm. But because of the rejection of Israel and the U.S. of Hamas to take over the government, uh, that uh, the, the Palestinian Authority rejected to give uh, the prime ministry to Hamas, mm -hmm. and this is one of the division right. on the Palestinian family or the Palestinian community that Hamas and the PLO are, or Hamas functioning not under the umbrella of the PLO, which is considered the sole legitimate representative of the Palestinian people. Even though they weren't elected, uh, even though Hamas was elected, correct? Even though Hamas yeah. uh, got elected. And since then, there was no election mm -hmm. happened. And if you're going to do the election today, Hamas will win. Yeah, but they have been labeled a terrorist group. So the attack then, it appears to me, on Israel on October 7th, the Israelis you, the, and the Americans said that that was a terrorist attack on Israel and that Israel had the right to defend itself. That is what the media here says, correct? This is what they say, but I mean, they put Hamas and Jihad Islami, other organizations, on the, uh, they get blacklisted as terrorist organization. Well, before them, uh, the PLO right. was on the terrorist organization. Yasser Arafat, too. Yasser Arafat was on the terrorist organization. Nelson Mandela was on the terrorist organization. The leader of South yeah. Africa. But right. we believe that struggling for self determination, you have the right under all the international law, if you are under occupation, to resist. You have to resist by all means. You know, mm -hmm. Palestinian people getting killed before October 7, every day. Nobody asked like in October 4 in the West Bank when four Palestinians got killed, you know. Nobody uh, talks about those people get killed. They, 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 in 1923 until October 7, over 200 Palestinians get killed. From what dates? Uh, on on the year until October. Uh -huh. uh, in, uh -huh. okay. 
in, in 2023, over 200 Palestinians mm. got killed. It was a daily. Okay, let's say Hamas is wrong and October 7 was wrong, etc. And now Israel is fighting Hamas on Gaza. Well, how, about what, uh, the, how about yeah. the 500 Palestinians get killed in the West Bank where uh -huh. there is no Hamas? Right. Recently. This is from October 7. Uh -huh. From October 7th. Okay. How about the 7,000 Palestinians get arrested there? Mm -hmm. You know? And the West Bank. On the West Bank. How about the Palestinians who are not only living in fear, many of them get arrested with Israeli passports, mm -hmm. you know? And they were not allowed to demonstrate on the streets with Palestinian flag inside Israel, you know? Okay, so... In other I believe, I'm getting from you that this attack on October 7th uh, was resistance. It's a resistance. Again, and they right. took hostages, yes. Majority of those hostages are from military settlements around Gaza. And they asked immediately, and still the demand is the same, didn't change eight months later, that we'll give you the prisoners, the Israeli prisoners, on the hand of the Palestinian resistance who took them. And if you release mm -hmm. Palestinian prisoners, which is, they have been living in the most miserable situation, unhumane situation, for years and years. The prisoners that Israel the has. Palestinian prisoners okay. on the Israeli jails and prisons. All right, so... There's another uh, fact I think that the American media is not taking into uh, their estimations of what's going on. And that is, there was an attack on October 7th. Okay. But let's talk about the Israeli response to that attack. That's a whole other element of self-defense, that if you're going to act in self-defense, it has to be proportionate, doesn't it? If, I mean, that's a big if, number one. But look, but I would like you to comment on the response of the Israelis. I, I, I want to make two points. Mm -hmm. Because Israel is responsible over Gaza. All the gates, all the borders, if we want to call it two entities, Israel and Gaza, as two different entities. Israel is still control every single uh, administrative and uh, border borders, air, mm -hmm. sea, you know, like Palestinian fishermen are not allowed to, to go farther than, than three kilometers from the shore to fish because Israel law, it says so. Israel digged already for gas on the Gaza Sea, you know, mm -hmm. and getting natural gas from there. Israel control all the border points where uh, trucks of food comes in and out. Israel control the registry of Palestinians. Uh, Israel, and they successfully did, they, they control the electric power and the water, you know. Uh, they control everything. To say they have the right to react the way they are reacting, no. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you are occupying that country under international law if you control that country. You don't have the right to go, regardless the reason, to go and kill its citizen because thinking is self-defense. <coughs> so I disagree mm -hmm. with the idea that they have right of self-defense, you know? It seems that every time I watch <coughs> anything on this subject, except Amy Goodman with Democracy Now!, that is the constant argument of the American media that they have a right to defend themselves. Why, however, is not that last point brought up? If you read even religious discussions of what's a just war, uh, the old you know, Catholic discussions about what makes a just war. It always has to be any attack, any attack 
has to be responded to in proportion to that attack. And that is, and I just did a case in court where that's a key element of self-defense, that you can't overreach. You can, and look at the death numbers in Gaza, 36,000 and counting today. Uh, the, the the numbers reach almost 40,000. Right, today, right? Or, or as Com today. Coming, and there are a lot of people are missing. Correct, and there's been no stop to this. And, and destroying 12 universities completely. Right. Over 320 schools, all the hospitals. All of them now? All of them. There is one, and they run out of uh, fuel just 48 hours ago. Uh, Two-thirds of the people get killed are women and children. Uh, and yet... There is, they, but it was a decision from the Israeli government with support of majority of the Zionist Ashkelon uh, on that government. No food, no water, no medicine, no electricity, no fuel, you know? It is genocide to force the Palestinians to leave. This is no the place whole they can, idea. They can go. For the Israeli mind, and this is until now still danger, by controlling Rafah checkpoints mm -hmm. with the Egyptian, that we go and transfer them to Egypt. Always the idea of Palestinian transfer, you know, it's on the Israeli military agenda. Okay, well, um, a couple of things I think that I know, I'm not certain about our timing, but I wanted to address a couple of things. That has been really on my mind about this idea that Americans are swallowing, the self-defense idea is very disturbing to me. Um, and, and I believe it's because the media has been so uh, unwilling to even educate the American public, to even state the barest of facts. All, I mean, all, to me, all you need to do is say, October 7th, 1,200 Israelis were taken hostage, or killed, or taken hostage, mm -hmm. versus 36,000 dead Gazans. A complete destruction of, the, of any kind of economy, education. 80% 80, 80 of housing have been lost, you know. Bumping housing, residence area, hospital, and this. If this is self-defense and the American government and American media, that's what you know, they say. keep saying. And that's why, I mean, we were demonstrating this weekend in Washington, D.C. Oh, yeah, let's talk about that. Oh, it's only, okay. Yeah, before yeah, we be, leave, be, you be, went, be, correct? Yes. And I was there because President Biden promised a red line uh, to be drawn to the Israeli and how much they are extending the war, mainly when they went to Rafah. And we are seeing the red line are moving and he's accepting the actions of yeah. the Israeli. So we want as American citizen to Washington DC wearing red and having a red line around the White House, two miles with the names of the Palestinian martyrs and to tell the uh, American administration, no, we as people of this country are the red line and we can draw the red line. And about 100,000 people 100, showed, up, yeah, showed up in a very quick uh, call right. in right. about a week from all over the country. And at the same time, we are uh, telling uh, Biden that we're going to be in Chicago uh, on the Democratic no, Convention, I hope we all are. yeah, uh, to put Palestine as a domestic issue and it's an American interest issue, and he mm -hmm. cannot he cannot be siding with Israel regardless what and the Israelis do, and giving them unlimited weapons, and it's coming from the European countries, mainly the British, the French. German and United States, and there is a responsibility with it. You send the weapons, you are killing the children, you are killing women, you are destroying hospitals, and this is what America, and this is what they are standing for, and the rest of the world are watching, so. 
Okay, thank you so much, Wafik, for going, too. It was a thank you. tough trip, right, on a bus? It was a long trip. <laughs> yeah, um, and you are exhausted by all this, I imagine? You, I would be. I, I, I am tired, but very hopeful that the American people will understand what's happening, and things are changing. If, and, and on to Chicago, right? And to Chicago, and we're going to make a difference. To the Democratic Convention. Inshallah, okay. yes. All right, well, thank you so much for being with us, Wafik, and for keeping on this incredible struggle, as you have been for years. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.